This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. Thanks for joining us. As always, we appreciate you tuning in. Thursday, the national political world was in an uproar over possible changes for Secretary of State Rex Tillerson to exit the State Department. A New York Times report placed CIA Director Mike Pompeo at State, Senator Tom Cotton from Arkansas as a possible replacement CIA Director. That could royal Arkansas politics if it happens. Here to discuss is GOP strategist, former legislator and consultant with Capital Advisors Group, John Burris and Democratic strategist and commentator and talk business and politics contributor Jessica deloach Saban. Thanks to both of you for being here. Thanks. We've had a fun week in politics. There's been a <laughs> lot, a lot going on. All right, there seems to be some, a little bit more truth to the rumor this time around that this may happen. Um, we've got the Cotton Whisperer here with us in John Burris. Would this be a good move for Tom Cotton to go to CIA? No, uh, which probably means he'll do it uh, because <laughs> Uh, I'm not the cotton whisperer. I, uh, you know, I don't mind being called that, of course, but but I'm not. Never have been. Uh, he's consistently done the opposite of any advice I've ever given him. Uh, you know, when I worked for him on <laughs> campaigns and stuff, you know, I didn't think he should volunteer for deployment. I, I met him when he was stationed at the Old Guard at Arlington Cemetery in 2005 or six, and he volunteered to go to Afghanistan. I told him it was stupid. Didn't think he should run for Congress in 2012. Thought he should run for Senate in 2010. And, uh, and so, you know, he consistently does the opposite of any advice that I think most people give him. I think he'll really consider the CIA if it's offered because the time that our country's in, and I think he enjoys working with guys like Pompeo and Mattis. I'd like to see him stay in the Senate, but I know he feels very compelled to serve, and I haven't talked to him. I don't know anything. I'm confident no one does. But it wouldn't surprise me at all if he if he did it if asked. Yeah, Jessica, this would royal Arkansas politics in 2018, yeah. uh, and basically the governor would put a replacement person in there until an election could fill the seat until 2020, and then there'd be a, a, an election for a six-year term. If it happens after July 6th, the governor appoints somebody to fill out the rest of the term until 2020. Uh, what type of person might Governor Hutchinson appoint? Well, I can tell you an example of a person that I would like to see considered would be someone like Jonathan Dismang. The reason why I say that is because he's very level-headed. He's the kind of person who operates very well behind the scenes. I think that he takes an objective that he's given very seriously, and he's very smart about executing that, ob that objective. I also think that he would be a very sensible addition to the United States Senate, and the United States Senate is a place that's meant for people who are more deliberative and they take their time and they don't make irrational decisions. <laughs> and I would like to see more of that. And so I would just say a great example would be someone like Jonathan Dismang. All right, you got a pick? Uh, that's not bad. I mean, I love Dismang. He and I came into the house together right. in 2008 and he would be phenomenal at whatever he chooses to do or whatever the governor could appoint him to. You know, you could go that direction. The problem is there's a lot of young guys, or not even young guys, there's a lot of politicians that want to be a U.S. Senator. And so the, I would assume that the governor would want to select someone that would not run for that seat. You know, there's a lot of theories. I, I have not heard anyone mention this. To me, it might be the first, but a name that comes to mind that would make the governor's life easier is someone like former Congressman Ed Bethune. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he been around a long time. People love him, trust him, respect him. It would be a short-term appointment to fill out the term and would stay out of the fray of all the people that think they ought to be a United States senator for the long term. And so that, that's an option, but the governor's going to make a good one. He knows all these yeah, factors. I've actually thrown Ed Bethune's name Have out you? there. I thought okay. that would be a good cap yeah. to a, a long political well, right. career I and think a very a respected politician. I've thrown Bud Cummins' name out there in the fact that I think he would appeal to some GOP establishment uh, voters as well as to some Trump uh, Republicans because he was Trump's campaign chairman here. I think the governor could kind of, because there is a little bit of trickiness to the governor making the selection because he may have a primary and needs to do something that might have to factor that. He could appoint Jan Morgan. No, <laughs> well, that would certainly eliminate his <laughs> primary problems, wouldn't it? Um, okay, so secondly, Jessica, yeah. how much of a free-for-all would something like this cause in Arkansas politics? Because we would have a election to fill out that seat. Democrats would get in, Republicans would get in. I think we'd have an independent candidate or two oh, yeah. as well. Would that be fun? I mean, fun, right? Okay, yes, maybe. Depends on how you look at it. I mean, we all remember what the, uh, what the race was like between Mark Pryor and Tom Cotton. And it was very expensive. It was very contentious. It was rough. 
Uh, I don't think people it was enjoy everything we love about was, politics in I, Arkansas. I don't think rough and tumble. Enjoy going through that uh, repeatedly. I, but I do think that should this become a position that is open, a race that is that is an option, you're going to see a lot of people enter this race. And I do think you will see primaries. I think the Republican primary for it could be very interesting watching people who maybe hold positions now shuffle around, right. then some new faces, and then maybe some of these young people that uh, John Burris just mentioned, or well, that he alluded to. It would be interesting to see who has that interest, that passion to run. And then with the Democrats, you never know. There's some really <laughs> wonderful Democrats that would do well in the United States Senate. So we'll so see. It'd be fun. So would it be Alabama-esque? John, would we see a, a, a Roy Moore type uh, candidate come no, around? I am complete, almost completely confident that that would not be the case. <laughs> I mean, Arkansas has a good set of incumbent politicians, and I use that word as a compliment, skilled politicians in office that have been vetted and have ran good campaigns, but don't have, are liked by both sides, establishment and quote unquote, and you know, Tea Party quote unquote. You know, you've got Tim Griffin, Leslie Rutledge, a host of people like Jonathan Nismang. I, I think, and then you've got senior statesmen like Ed Bethune. So, and and, and so I think you're going to have plenty of Maybe people. Maybe some old guard like a Davy Carter, your friend too, former House uh, yeah. Speaker, would be no. popular with some Democrats yes, as well. Yes, he would. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like, there. The good thing about the Republican surge over the past few years is that there are a lot of us, and there's a lot of us uh, that think they deserve to be in office and I think a lot of them do. I hope I hope none of my friends run against each other. Yeah. I don't oh, think Oh, they that, will. John no. yeah. Parker, you can count on that. No. You guys the Republicans are the Democratic Party of old now where friends used to run against each other all the time. Remember those legendary David Pryor, Ray Thornton, Jim Guy Tucker, you know, it was I don't only heard, one person could win. You I've weren't born then, them. I know. So yeah. I'm bringing that to thanks for making me feel old there. I was a kid. Yeah. Let's talk tax bill politics. Um, let's assume a bill gets to President Trump's desk. I think there is still a likelihood that that will happen. Is that good for Republicans in 2018? Do they get to say, hey, we got something done? Or by what may be some of the outcomes of that bill, does that play to Democrats' advantage? I think that uh, in the short term, yes, to be able to say, hey, we finally made it through an entire year and did a thing. We got something done, and we did it no matter what it took. And we Neil threw a Gorsuch. bunch of Neil Gorsuch. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> we threw a bunch of stuff into a package, and we passed it. What really matters the most, if this comes to pass, which I think is highly likely, um, would be Democrats building a message around what exactly was passed, because people are still figuring out what's in this package right now. And it does not help that you had Senator Marco Rubio come out and say, "Hey, you know, the next step to this, you know, paying for the." Uh, deficit or, or what we're contributing to the deficit would be, you know, cutting certain services or cutting back on spending like Medicare, for Medicare, Social Medicare, Security, Social Security, you know, the kind of stuff that you don't want to touch. Let me tell you how you don't make America great again. It's by cutting programs that people depend upon, that they've been paying into their whole lives and saying, you know what, we really need to use some of that money to pay for uh, benefits for wealthy people. That is not how you make America great again. And I'm pretty sure that people who voted for Donald Trump didn't vote for that. How are the politics going to play out on this if they if they get something and Trump signs it? I think it's fine. People need to pay less in taxes and they, they need but to pass a bill. But will they pay less in taxes? You know, the, 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 there will be a conference, I think, between sure. the two chambers and so neither bill is probably perfect. Pass a bill where people pay less in taxes, life would be okay. Uh, you know, I think the rest are details. It's not as complicated as health care. All right, we've got about 60 seconds left, so I want to get takes on the governor's race this week. Jay Martin in, Jay Martin out, uh, Jan Morgan still floating around there. Um, first of all, to you, uh, John Burris, does, does the governor have a potential primary problem if Jan Morgan gets in? Not a problem, but I, because I don't think he'll take it for granted. Um, I think it's a good opportunity for him to come out, and as I've said before, talk about some of the conservative things he wants to do in his second term. And I think he'll beat uh, Jan Morgan if she chooses to run because he has a good record to run on. Uh, and I think he can run a campaign that builds on what he, how he wants to continue that. And I think he'll run a smart campaign. Therefore, I don't think he'll have any trouble. All right. Are Democrats better off now that Jay Martin's not in this race? It may open up for a young, new, fresh-faced candidate? Well, sure. And I think the potential for that young, fresh-faced candidate existed even with Jay Martin in the race. Um, and it actually would have been a very good thing for the Democratic Party to have a primary. I think primaries are very helpful to parties. And so it's a little disappointing to see that that is not what's coming to pass right now. 
But uh, there's still some time. There's still some time for more people to show All up. Right. So we'll see. All right. Either you, you, you want to throw a political prediction out there before we get off the set, or do we? We're almost out of time. Yeah, so if you don't are. have one, we're. Hmm. I'll put it on Twitter. All right. We'll yeah, do that. Same. <laughs> Jessica Saban, John Burris. Thank you both for being here. Thanks. We're back with more right after this word from our sponsors.